Welcome to The Love Scientist, where we help you navigate the mysteries of love using science and research to help you be more successful in romance. And today we're going to take a look at what I believe to be one of the most important things that you can do to build intrigue and create a romantic vibe in the beginning of a relationship. And it really revolves around the intrigue of absence. You've heard the saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And it's not just a clever saying. It is neuroscience and it is behavioral science. It is definitely something that is gonna allow you to create romance uh, where other things simply cannot. And I remember many times sharing with my kids as they grew older and they started dating, they're like, should I text? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I'd always say, I recommend you do nothing. Like sit back, let time go by. And they never listened to me, but, but it was still a true statement. So let's take a look at it. All right, first up, there's something referred to as the scarcity principle. According to behavioral economics, people place a higher value on things that are rare and hard to get. And if something is constantly available, it's not as appealing to them. And romance is going to be applied the same way. In other words, the more that you're gone, the higher the value. Uh, the more that you're there, the lesser the value. But there's definitely a balancing act because if you just disappear and don't call, people are going to forget about you and move on pretty quick. Uh, so it's something you have to be cautious of, but too much will definitely cause a problem. What does this mean? How can you respond to this? Well, create a little space and time. Your time, attention, and energy suddenly feels more valuable. And it's not about playing games. It's about maintaining your value. Second is what's referred to as the Zajonk effect. Psychologist Robert Zajonk discovered that repeated exposure to something increases our liking for it. But here's the twist. Too much exposure too fast, it can backfire. Think of it like your favorite song. If it's on repeat every day, you begin to skip through it. If you play it every now and then, it's still your favorite song. Uh, but the more frequently you play it, the quicker you're going to get to a burnout of not liking that song anymore. And then years down the road, it comes on and you're still like, oh, I've heard that song too many times. Uh, I love music and I specifically don't listen to certain songs too much for that reason. A little absence resets the playlist. It gives your partner a chance to miss you for a while. And that reactivates this emotional connection. All right, third, let's talk about chemistry for a while, because when people say love is chemistry, it legitimately really is. There's an effect referred to as dopamine and anticipation effect. Dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter, spikes with anticipation, not just gratification. So when you're anticipating something that you're really looking forward to, there's going to be a spike in dopamine. Dopamine builds love and suspense equals dopamine. In other words, create a little suspense. Uh, if somebody's trying to get a hold of you, don't quickly answer the phone. Maybe let them pause for a bit. And again, it's not about playing games because uh, a lot of times when we're trying to hold our value, we say, oh, we're playing games. And that's not what this is. Holding your value is a totally different thing. Everybody on the planet puts their best foot forward when they begin a, a romantic venture. Uh, there's a point where you can then kind of relax a little bit and, and when you feel safe in that relationship. But until that moment comes, you have to hold your value. And in this case, we do it by building a little suspense, creating a little bit of anticipation uh, for the next time they're going to see you. All right, fourth, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about what's referred to as attachment and autonomy. Science also tells us a healthy attachment requires both closeness and autonomy. A study in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships found that couples who maintain individuality and space 
report higher long-term satisfaction. Absence gives you a chance to reflect. And there's a, there's a large percentage of people who have been married for 50 years uh, and they live in different houses. It's referred to in England as living alone together. But what it has done is it has created this absence in this space and relationships like that tend to last longer than the ones where you're just constantly being exposed to each other. You live together, you work together, you're doing everything together. And, you know, people are very successful in relationships like that. I don't want to insinuate that it wouldn't work or anything like that. But this intrigue, this romance, this abs the thing that only absence can build there's no other way to get it, but through absence. Um, it's where the term absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's kind of the same idea if, you know, if you've been married for 40 years and one of you goes on a vacation with some friends or on a business trip or whatever, and you're gone for 10 days, it's so wonderful when you come back together, you missed each other. And it's really the same idea. So it's really, it's, it's not about playing games. It's about being real. Uh, this isn't about ghosting or playing hot and cold or nothing like that. It's about intentional distance, stepping back to protect your own energy and your own value, letting the connection breathe and allowing both people to just simply grow. And in the end, it's, it's always going to benefit your relationship to just step away, um, build a little distance have your own things, have, you know, have your own schedule, uh, have your own nights out, have your own things where you're out doing other stuff, especially in the beginning of that relationship. Uh, this is going to do nothing but build intrigue and expectations, which is going to create dopamine, which is going to equal love. So, there you go. Absence is extremely powerful. It's extremely important. And it's not just thinking it is or hearing that it is. It is science.